is Jefferson Starship with No Way Out. And uh, Kevin, this is a Christmas present to you. 2019 from your wife. And I um, hope you enjoy it. And these are fun, man. I know the this is your first one for sure. And you've got two of them coming. We also got um, The Heights with How Do You Talk to an Angel. Two really good songs. Now the tuning in this Jefferson Starship is standard. It's real poppy, right? So it's got, you know, a lot of synth in it, keyboards and stuff. And there's pockets where the guitar kind of drops out. There's also um, at least two tracks of guitar going on. So obviously you're only one guitar player. I set this up um, where I think it makes the most sense um, as far as playing it as a solo guitar, right? So um, let's jump in. Let's jump right into it. So we're tuned standard, like I said. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you've got a little better overall view here. Now, the very beginning, I was playing the chorus on the intro. Just really nice chords in there. But on this, there's distortion and there's clean. So on the distortion, and it's not really saturated. Kevin, it's, you know, approximately five on the gain. Um, and that's all written on your key and glossary and your tabs. So... All these are is power chords, a C sharp, a C, so we have C sharp, C, B flat, and F. And uh, section 1A, zero seconds in, this is with distortion. So uh, if, if you are even a beginner on guitar, you probably already understand power chords, but check it out. We have 4th fret A, 6th fret D, just move it a half step back, that means 1 fret to the 3rd and 5th fret, A and D. A whole step back, which is two frets, so fret one on the A, fret three on the D, that's a B flat power chord. And just move it straight up to the E and A string, first and third fret. Okay, so I'm gonna play that kind of in time here. be ready to cut out. So it goes into more of a clean on this. And this is section 1B, 18 seconds in. And it's a D minor chord. Played how you're not probably used to seeing it. 5E, 6B, 7G. And uh, actually, let's use our third finger on the 7G. And the fingering is written in your tab. Circled numbers represent the fingers. You know, index, middle, third. So we're going to strum that. We're just going to hit all of them at the same time. It's got a little bit of fuzz. It's not super, super clean. And that's going to ring out for a long time. It's going to sound kind of empty if you're playing this by yourself. And then you'll listen for this. Which is technically, I believe that's blending two guitar parts, but they made the most sense to me. The other one's just like a... Uh, uh, just kind of stated on that type of thing so this gives you some cordings so that'll ring and you'll hear the changes though 5e and 3a right back to that d minor chord so you start it with the d minor we have a an a note and a c note so that's fifth fret e third fret a right back to that d minor chord so one thing to be mindful of i haven't heard you play um if you're um, going to be continuing CBT lessons. Uh, maybe we can uh, email back and forth and maybe you even send me a video or audio of your playing. It'll help me know what you need extra help on. Um, you know, I don't know, is this going to be tough for you to go to jump and land all those? You know, if this is a new chord, it may be, but work at it and it will get comfortable. So, um, moving along, section 1C, 37 seconds in. It's not real in your face, but it's a G power chord, 3E, 5A, and we're going to play it 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, so it's 13 times, however you want to count that, but you want to palm mute it, and palm muting, once again, I don't know if you understand what palm muting is, but just the side of your palm here, right in front of the bridge, you should uh, get this sound. If I don't palm mute, here it's more open and, and breathy, this chokes it. It's used a lot in rock and metal actually. But um, 
and if you move too far up, watch what happens. Too much mute. If I scoot it back, it's a perfect spot, and you should be feeling the metal off your bridge. So we're going to go, I would count it, if you have to count it, go, in your mind, four, you're going to strum it four times, again and again, so three groups of four and one extra one. Okay, so that's uh, two, three, four, um, yeah, let me count them again, let's make sure our count's right, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, exactly, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, then we transition quickly to open A, 3D. Angle this up a little bit for you. No palm mute on that. And then 1A, 3D. Short rest there, as well as here. And then we're going to continue but we're going to palm mute this B flat power chord now and that's one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Well, that's just seven times, so. Then, uh, this is really cool. Keep the palm muting. In other words, your palm stays right here. Go 1A, 2D, and then go open A, 2D. And you're going to do that again and again and again. So it's four times. Sounds like this. Once again, it's not dominant, strong in your face. It's it, it's laid back. Takes you back to section one B. So you'd be going right back to the verse, which is section one B. All right, um, and that comes in at forty-seven seconds. Section one D. This is also played clean, and it's a G power chord again. The three E five A. This time, no palm muting. You're going to go 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 times on this. So I would think 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Um, that transitions into the same thing as last time. Watch. To the open A, 3D. 1, 3 AD, that's the same. Short rest, and check it out. We're leading out of this section, and it's heading into the chorus. It'll go palm mute four times. Open three, one, three, open three. So it's... So, one, two, three, four, three E, five A. Palm mute three times. And then open A, 2D, two times. This is all palm muted. And then 2A, 4D, three times. No palm mute. Building up. So you're really, your chord outline on the end is this. Taking us to a more distorted part. part of the song some pretty cool chords in here um, so email me let me know how you do with these it will help me like I said um, with other lessons so we're gonna go section 2a minute 13 in 6d 8g and 9b okay that's a a flat or a G sharp power chord that doesn't matter so much as this matters the fact that you can hear all three of those strings clearly all right, um, from there, it's a pretty nice transition because you're going to go. You leave the outer fingers and then just instead of an 8G, we're going to go to an, a 7G. Just use your middle finger. So that's the only like passing tone within the chord. From there, the easiest way to think of this, leave the pinky alone. Go third finger, 8D. Move the middle finger off, index, drop it down to 6G. So they're all right within that little area, which is nice. Pinky doesn't even move till now. 10D, 8G, 9B. So. From 
there, we're going to go to a C sharp major. Now these are tough if you don't know them because there's more strings involved in the chord now. It's not a power chord. 4A, 6th fret, D, G, and B. Most people like to bar that with a secondary finger. I'm going to use my third finger, lay it flat, 6 D, G, B. So check it out. If, it, if you're not sure it's clear, arpeggiate it. That just means pick one string at a time out of the chord itself. Watch. If you have this problem, then you know, okay, let me adjust that finger. Same thing. Fix it, you know. Index. Barely touch underneath string six. That serves as a mute. It's nice to know in case you hit that E. It sounds horrible, right? But if you're touching it and you touch the and strum the low E, you won't hear it. It's dead, right? Those are good habits to instill on guitar. People rush. They want to play fast all the time and uh, get sloppy, and that's why because they've overlooked little things like that. Okay, so. If all four strings are clear, and this is a C sharp major, you just strum all of them. Angle that pick and just. It's gonna ring out. You do it again, there's double dots in music, that means repeat. Three E, six A. It's like just a little in between segue and then start it over again. section. At a minute and 41 seconds you're going to see a series of repeats, so we've already done those. And then we turn over to page 3, more repeats at 231, but the solo, this solo is really cool. Really, really like the solo, it goes. We have... I'm going to write this down. I've got the fingering for you in this. But you can change some of the fingering if you're not comfortable. 13B, 1513G. And then go right back to 13 on the B string. Alright, so. Here we go. We have. Right back, there's a uh, line in your tabs for a rest. 15G, slide to 17. And all those techniques are notated if you look on your key and glossary, the very first page. Any of those little things. you got to know when to slide, know when to bend, all that stuff. So we're sliding up to 17, not picking the 17. And then go right back to 15. 13G, 14B. 16B, 15G. And I would go pinky third, but you could go third second. But we have... Check this out. When you hit that 15G, you have to bend it a whole step. That's two frets. I can check it. That's two frets. That's what we're bending. When you bend, you're taking a note, and, and the pitch is going up. We have to gauge that pitch so it's not all over the place. You know, you don't want to just go and guess. You know, you got to land the note. So bring it back down and then do what's called a pull off take that third finger snap it like a pick and it'll make this 13 G ring so we have alright it looks easy if you've never done it but um, it's tricky at first I remember I remember back in the day so 15 D 13 G so 2 minutes and 49 seconds 13 B um, hit it again and then go to 15B, half step bend release, so it'll go. It'll be. So a half step, if a whole step's two frets, a half step's going to be one fret. If we, if we need to check it by ear, there's our start note. We're bending it to that. And I like to support it with other fingers. It's, it's more secure, you know. You have more control over the bend. It's like going but we're creating it with the bend, the technique. 15G, 14B. Let's see, yeah. 16B, 15G. This is that bend release pull off again. All the way up to the 15D there is the same. 
Okay. Here's the only difference. After that, 13G, slide to 15. Stop the note, come back, do it again. But go ascending, descending. So you're sliding to 15 from 13 and sliding back. But we're only picking the start, start note, right? So it's... So... Yeah, we have... Two minutes, 55 seconds in. Now this is, I think, triple tracked. In other words, there's a, other guitar tracks he layered over this arpeggio. It's harmonized. And really cool little uh, arpeggio, too. Yeah. 